Okay, hello YouTube, and before I start, let me say that to the few people who have been watching my stuff for a long time, most of my uh, rage at the moment that I'm feeling, <laughs> simple as that, will not be directed at you. At the moment, it's mainly directed at Emerald Dreamer, Colin, and maybe you know any any of these who who are basically fear mongering, jumping on the bandwagon, and just really going along without proper consideration of what you're doing. Because the truth is so important, and it's so important at this time, because there is a lot of deception. Huge. Absolutely huge at the moment. And the truth is so important. If you want to avoid weeping and wailing and gnashing of teeth, then listen and start making your own calculations based upon what you absolutely know. And words in a book does not apply. Any book. So what's going on? There is a lot of fear in people's hearts. And they can easily attribute this fear to some scary story about our past and what that means for what you think the future might be. So, okay, so a lot of this sits around fallen angels. Okay, so the very word itself is just wrong for a start. Because we don't even know what angels are. And, you know, to say that angels fell, if you imagine angels as messengers of God, something that God created for a purpose, to imagine that God could be that infallible is, is wrong. And it's, it's basically making people into hypocrites, because they'll say, one thing, oh, I can't believe people could be into Satanists and say, oh, they love Satan and stuff like that. And then on the next hand, to talk about some sort of fantasy that involves God basically not having control of anything. Right. I imagine myself doing this swearing, but I wasn't. <laughs> I haven't. So, you know, you've got Emerald Dreamer doing this show saying, oh, why do people doubt God and stuff like that? But then imagines that God would allow such horrific things like shape-shifting fallen angels. Because I was on the, on the chat yesterday and I was sort of, you know, putting my point across and, you know, and then someone came up and said, oh, they're female fallen angels and then... And then I sort of thought, right, well, you know, if they have sort of raped a man and they're supposed to be big, you know, would the man's penis even touch the sides? So, and then someone, and then Colin comes up and goes, oh, no, no, it's not physical. They didn't physically have sex with them, you know. It was all like, I don't know what the word he used, but, you know, the test tube, you know, and the way they do it today, infertility. But then I was like, well, right, hang on, isn't it? Weren't they doing it out of lust, driven by lust, you know, for these daughters of men that they were really attracted to, so they're going to, you know, come down and, and then get the test tubes out. So, you know, when you start to prod and probe things, rather than just take what's said, you actually start to uncover some layers and you sort of see it's not quite right. So, right, so the the... 
the stuff in the Bible is is first of all very ambiguous second of all it's been translated more than once did those translators fully understand what the meaning of say giants was right? so we've got these things we've got this fallen angels these Nephilim these supposed giants right and then the giants theory comes in and then oh well that's you know they built Stonehenge then yeah because because they're 18 foot tall or something. I mean, even if they were 18 foot tall, it wouldn't necessarily mean they can carry 100 ton blocks. But people want to jump to conclusions. So I question the Giants thing. And, you know, I get comments like, oh, it's all over the place. Are you kidding? You know, of course I've heard of the Giants stuff, but I've never seen anything realistic, anything convincing. So I was asking them for links, and the, you know, one came giants in Peru, and these just look so fake, like they look plastic, basically. Uh, they're skeletons; they look tall, bad photographs, uh, not very convincing at all. And then there was another link for mud giants, and 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 these these apparently would have been about you know as tall as a skyscraper, and then. You know, I looked at one link myself, did a search and saw this guy looking at this mountain and it, you know, looked like it could have been a, a body and, and saying that was a giant. And um, and then the link that Emerald Dreamer gave me was an, an hour long talk and it was quite interesting actually, so thank you for the link. But he starts off by saying, yes, all these pictures that we see around on the internet they are all hoaxes and most of them come from a time when there was a Photoshop competition in 2002 so this is where these pictures you would have seen because there are no pictures of any giant uh, known right and then you get to the evidence of giants and we're talking seven foot tall and above there is a skeleton pretty old it was seven foot six, right? So that is not the giants we're talking about. These are just big people. There's a whole other thing about giants, you know, uh, myths and stories. This, you know, we humans, we tell stories. And of course, giants are probably the most popular thing, isn't it, in your imagination? Oh, imagine if someone was really big. And you can, because we've all been children. And as children, adults look like giants. So it's something in there, it's, but the evidence there isn't there. And all these seven foot, you know, sometimes reported eight, maybe nine even, right? They're all in uh, northern hemispheres, most of them in North America, England, Wales. That's where the majority are. So these are cold countries. And, you know, you, you know for yourself, if, um, um, you know, people get taller when they're well fed. You know, for a few generations, you could, if they've been well fed all the time, they'll be getting slightly bigger and bigger each generation. And you can end up with some quite big people. And we know we've got people surviving alive today in the Guinness Book of Records about eight foot tall. And we know that there's a disease in the brain that they don't stop growing. So even Goliath may have been, you know, just freakish tall person or maybe they were all quite tall you know and maybe it was exaggerated and then the word giant comes in look at the giants right so back to the Nephilim and fallen angels so first of all there aren't any you know if these giants were around they would have been around the Middle East that sort of area well there's no bone bone records there they're mostly in the northern hemisphere and the people with double sets rows of teeth, that's in North America. And I guess that's possible. And it may have been one of um, God's things from earlier on in history. Maybe God was experimenting like with the Neanderthals. And the other type of hominids that found, but were known to be all completely wiped out. Right, so. There's going to be some truth in it. There's going to be you know an element of truth in it and what but what the big lie here is that 
the, the angels part. Now they could have been spirits and maybe it's possible that these first ten generations of humans were different, were in a higher state at the beginning as they were coming down and possibly might they have been able to do after they died with their spirit body make someone pregnant? I don't know I don't know I think it's unlikely but I can't prove it out but I think the most likely thing is is that there was a divide between the line of Cain and the line of Seth and Adam and Eve had other children I don't want to get into that just now uh, Book of Adam and Eve and the Book of Jasher, they both say completely different things. And I can't remember which way is which. But I think in Jasher they say Adam and Eve had a boy girl and a boy girl and then no more children. And the Book of Adam and Eve says they had nine more children after that. Nine. Because maybe Seth was a replacement for Abel. So that what would have been nine. But in total there would have been... 12 pairs, and this makes sense. And God would have known how to make Eve, because all her eggs would have been in there. So God would have had a good idea of how, how the children were going to come out. I mean, God had control over this. So you had 12 pairs, 12 soulmates, if you like. And then it would have been quite obvious whose, was, whose soulmate they would have felt it. And that's why you got the different races. But I said I didn't want to get into that yet. So, what mostly like happened with these fallen angels is that Seth's line was supposed to be um, r righteous and everything, right? And and Cain's line, that they were just all mucking about and and because um, they probably couldn't grow crops very well, they didn't spend their time doing that. So they would have been hunting and eating animals. Uh, it creates quite a lot of extra energy. They were dancing, making music, doing stuff like this. And um, Seth's line was supposed to be all righteous. And and Adam and Eve's other children I mean, went off, did different things. But it's so complicated. We're not going to know. We're not going to know that. So, you know, there is this thing about wasting time about what you what's important and what you know. But... You know, obviously, people, fallen angels stuff and giants and stuff is clickbait. People, people are interested in it, so people are going to go there. Um, so, when these, the most likely thing is that people in the line of Seth, and it's I think it's the book of Adam and Eve that says this, um, went down and slept with the daughters of Cain. Now. Why would that create giants? Well, genetic diversity, and I'm not talking giants as in they were big physically, but men of renown, because it does say that. And giants could be a mistranslated word for just people who were, let's say, you know, dominant. Or like we see today, you know, when we look up to people who uh, famous film stars and famous people, you know, men, men of renown, just, you know, maybe they had something about them, this gi genetic diversity, um, freedom to do what they want, whatever. Um, so that is the most likely thing that this is alluding to. But, you know, everything in that early Bible is so ambiguous. I mean, and then you've got the flood, right, which is supposed to have killed everybody on the world, right? Which is bullshit. But what isn't bullshit is that the earth was once covered with water. The earth was once covered with water. But a long time ago. Over 300 million years ago. And the earth was a lot smaller. And it's been expanding. And that's how the oceans have been formed. Because <laughs> all the ocean crust is less than 300 million years old. And it's in bands. You can see it from the edges of the coast, it's the oldest. And as you go in, it's in bands, every 10 million years or so. And then where you get to, you get to the central rift, where it's all still cut up and jagged. And it's so obvious. It's a tear. 
and it's right down the middle of the Atlantic Ocean and it's all the way around the Pacific Ocean. So, that all fits with the archaeological evidence. And this is how the firmament divided the waters above from the waters below, and the waters above being the atmosphere, and moisture in the air. It's wet, it's not completely dry. So as the earth expands, the water, the ocean water, the sea water that was covering the earth, now land starts to come up above, and maybe this is the fuel for all the, the, the flood myths. And maybe it was explained to the people in the early days when there were still, perhaps, some of God's helpers around. Because they do say how they sort of see them running around. Again, ambiguous, never, we're not going to know until we speak to these individuals who lived those lives and, can, and they can remember it. Where was I? Right. So it's all people. It's all been, it's all been people. So yes, yeah, so sorry. Yeah. Firmament comes out, divides the waters above from the waters below. It land creates land for the first time. We have land, and then every ten million years or so, the Earth does a bit more expansion, and we get to the state where we we are today. And we've possibly been going through an Earth expansion period in the last few years. All these fish deaths and things like that, and the earthquakes and volcanoes, but it does, it is calming down. It is. I have to calm down. <coughs> but I just had to get this out, because I couldn't think of anything else. So, giants is mostly myth, like cannibalism. Cannibalism is mostly myth. I've looked into that before. And, um, you know, I'm not bringing up pictures with my evidence. Um, I'm hoping people take my word and you can check me out. I mean, like yesterday on this chat, I caught out Colin being duplicitous. Um, I've already said this. I think I did at the beginning, didn't I? But, um, yeah. Sort of, so, you know, just sort of, and and like again, the shape shifting, like, so we're saying it's, you know, it's not realistic that, that these fallen angels would have had sex with, you know, and if there was a giant in the belly of the mother, uh, uh, it would have killed the mother. And everyone's like, yeah, the, the, it did. Yeah, the mother's died. Yeah, so, uh, okay, so uh, how'd they get them out then, you know, and who was there and... Who was going to nurse the baby after, after he'd killed his own mother, right? Would that baby then have gone on to survive and be a man of renown, right? Oh, the spirits did it. Oh, the, or the shape-shifting spirits so they, they could change their size and have sex with the women. And then, you know, you just... Yeah, you can make anything true if you just create complete fantasy. And then, of course, because they know I call myself the Christ... And so, that you know, and I, because I called out Colin for lying, and he goes, yeah, so says the one who's the Christ. And, okay, yeah, right, I, I understand that, I'm going to get that. And and I can't be angry about that, I guess, because it is, is you know, I can understand how that seems just completely unbelievable. But, you know, I only say it because it... It was the truth. I mean, the the way I brought it out was very, very gradually. It, you can you can go back and look. It's it is what it is, and I wouldn't be being honest, and I can't be talking about truth and everything, and then have to hold something back like that. I wouldn't have been able to hold it back. It's not right. And then I think maybe I should push it out more. Maybe you know I want people to hear this truth and stuff. So. You know, sometimes I do and sometimes I don't. And um, I know when I do it doesn't really help. Um, but it probably probably has brought a few people to look at my videos if I hadn't have said anything at all. So, you know, it is, it is what it is. Um, but I can tell you if you watch my last couple of videos, um, it's working. 
the pain in the feet. I now feel the. I I am a new branch on the tree of eternal life, the eternal tree of life. And and stuff happens. In, stuff's going on in my heart and pain in the feet doesn't doesn't stay. So it's working. I should be happy, and I I would be. I am happy. <laughs> Apart from I've got Christmas stuff to do, that's probably in my mind, and I was going to go and do some work this morning, and then there was a uh, road closure, and it was like, hmm, is this telling me not to? And then I saw a sign, 922, and it was like, okay, <laughs> maybe I'm supposed to go and do something, so I thought it was probably meditation. Come sit home, meditate, can't do anything because I was just thinking about this crap. I think, why am I getting so angry? Something made me happy. Something good. Uh, a, a new YouTuber, she doesn't get many views, called Jesus Only. And, um, yeah, she talking some more right stuff. I, I sort of nearly went away from her, and she did one called The Book of Enoch, so I thought, I'll have a look at this. And she was saying how she'd always wanted to know what the seven spirits of God was. And I'd never really thought of this. And then she said they were the... Let's see if I can remember now. Faith. Patience. Wisdom. Justice. I'm not reading. I haven't got these written down. Justice. I've lost my train now. Don't usually forget this next one. Oh, I did. Not justice. Mercy. Then justice. Peace and goodness. So, faith, patience, wisdom, mercy. Justice, peace, goodness, and uh, I, you know, I had a feel about this, and because I was thinking, you know, wouldn't there be more? Like, why they? Why seven? I like number seven, so I'm happy with that. But you know, that was my thought. Like, wouldn't there be more? Shouldn't there be more? And like, because you can almost apply the same, you know, spirits of God, and you could also say love is, because love is so massive and vast so it's good you know to sort of break it up a bit um, and it's like colours you've got these you know seven colours of the rainbow sorry sun's in my eyes seven colours of the rainbow um, and then you can make all these wonderful colours using bits of the seven colours so it's a bit like that as well so I felt about it and I'm definitely feeling the truth of that so I was very Appreciated that. Right. So I'm coming on to a big question here. A big, a big thing. So I'm going to talk about Yeshua. Now, and the wheat and the tares, the wheat and the chaff, wheat and darnell. Now I've looked through the Bible and the, it's only, um, the first one to come up with is John, John the Baptist. And he puts it differently than Yeshua. And I think Yeshua misunderstood it. Now, before you all go, ooh, 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 
Yeshua's say closeness to God was always improving. See, you know, nothing ever stands still. God never stands still. It's always growing. That's why relying on stuff that's written 2,000 years ago, never mind there being prophecies, because the future's unwritten. And a prophecy, most of them are warnings, you know, we're coming up to these end days, we got to sort our shit out. So, there's always, you know, more things happening. And it's been 2,000 years, and plenty has happened in the last 2,000 years. And, like, you know, we didn't suddenly have utopia in back in 70 AD or whatever. So, what, what went wrong? You know, if, if that was the thing that was, if that was God coming down on Earth and sorting everything out, well, why didn't it work? So let's so start with this. So John is basically announcing to his followers, there is one to come greater than I. And people were starting to think that John was the Messiah. He was, he was doing some good stuff. He was showing some light, in a way. Where is it? Three. Oh, yeah, here we go. The people were on the tiptoe of expectation. Oh, he was preaching. So people asked I'll read a bit for. The people asked him, Then what are we to do? He replied, The man with two shirts must share with him one who has none. And anyone who has food must do the same. Among those who came to be baptized were tax gatherers, and they said to him, Master, what are we to do? He told them, Exact no more than the assessment. Soldiers on service also asked him, And what of us? To them he said, no bullying, no blackmail, make do with your pay. So here he's, you know, he's spitting out some good truth. He's fairness, basically, isn't it? And you could apply this to the justice. See, this thing about uh, seven qualities of love or seven spirits of God, it's good because you can see, actually, sometimes... Sometimes you think, oh, I better not do that because that's not loving. You know, that's, so loving isn't always praise and kindness. And so this is one of the things that I'm noticing people would do on YouTube. They just, just, you know, be friends with the, the, the majority. You know, the majority, just agree with them. Yeah, you're right, you're right, you're right, you're right, you're right, you're right, you're right. And I tell you, you're, you're going on a slippery slope to the gnashing of teeth and weeping and wailing because if you start to fuck with your belief system and put things in there that are not true it will only lead away from God and into fear and nastiness and this is your last warning from me anyway the last time I'm going to be bothered, right? I, I got pissed off because I had to look into the giant stuff, even though I just knew. I didn't need to look into it for myself. So I had to do this, this research because just to, just to be able to come back and, and, and say, look, you know, you're wrong. It's... It's not as you thought. There's no evidence. If you want to believe in God, you must believe that God is 
amazingly awesome, omnipotent. Right? Look at what God has made. And there must still be some wickedness around they can do stuff like that. That was weird. That was really weird. The way the ringer went then, it's never done that. <laughs> Get out. See now, I'll tell you, once you feel yourself on the... that you are part of the eternal tree of life. Man, you don't fear nothing. So the people were on the tiptoe of expectation, all wondering about John, whether perhaps he was the Messiah. But he spoke out and said to them all, I baptise you with water, but there is one to come who is mightier than I. I am not fit to unfasten his shoes. He will baptise you with the Holy Spirit and with fire. His shovel is ready in his hand to winnow his threshing floor and gather the wheat into his granary, but he will burn the chaff on a fire that can never go out. So this is, this is what you'd call prophecy, isn't it? He was, he was feeling good. He was talking. Okay, but he was, he was purposely prepared. You know, his mindset, intention, preparing them to, his followers to, to follow, Yeshua, who was coming. Okay. But he comes at his window in his threshing floor to gather the wheat into his granary, but he will burn the chaff on a fire that can never go out. So he makes this prophecy, all right? And there's no more, no more mentioned of it after that. But people would have heard that. What's this with the chaff and the fire? Okay. So what I'm looking for next is Yeshua's version of the pro of the parable. Well, it's in with a bunch of other parables where he's saying the kingdom of heaven is like this and then tells a parable. That's the one where he says about how the the soil must be fertile. You know, if you're that's about taking on truth. When you're ready to take on truth, you're your soil is fertile and ready because if it, you know, it could land on a bit of a rock and might sprout and but then it doesn't do much. About the kingdom of God. Sorry about this. Maybe it's in Matthew. Uh, yeah, because that that they're both that parable there is both in Luke and Matthew. But it's um. All right, here we go. It's in Matthew twenty-four. So he's telling, he's so he's speaking to his disciples. He's saying, you know, I speak to them in parables, and then they say, yeah, but can you can you explain the parables to us as well, like? So here he goes, Wheat and Darnell. Here is another parable he put before him. All right, so he does actually say, the kingdom of heaven is like this. A man sowed his field, because he had said that with the previous ones, you see. So he's been saying, the king, you know, tell us about the kingdom of heaven. And, you know, this is, this is quite early on as well. Like this is, you know, he's really healed, healed a couple of people, um, you know, and talked to people and stuff. The man sowed in his field with good seed, but while everyone was asleep, his enemy came, sowed the darnel among the wheat and made off. When the corn sprouted and began to fill out, the darnel could be seen among it. The farmer's men went to their master and said, Sir, it was not good seed that you sowed in your field. Then where has this darnel come from? This is the enemy's doing, he replied. 
Well then, they said, shall we go and gather the darnel? No, he answered. In gathering it, you might pull up the wheat at the same time. Let them both grow together till harvest, and at harvest time I will tell the reapers, gather the darnel first and tie it in bundles for burning. Then collect the wheat into my barn. Ah, right, and then, it, then, they, then they ask him, so a couple more, and then they say, He dismissed the people who went into his house, where his disciples came to him and said, Explain us the parable of the darnel in the field, and this was his answer. The sower of the good seed is the son of man. The field is the world. The good seed stands for the children of the kingdom, the darnel for the children of the evil one. The enemy who sowed the darnel is the devil. The harvest is the end of time. The reapers are angels as the darnel, then is gathered up and burnt. So at the end of time the Son of Man will send out his angels, who will gather out of his kingdom. Whatever makes men stumble, and all whose deeds are evil. And these will be thrown into the blazing furnace of the place of wailing and grinding of teeth. And then the righteous will shine as brightly as the sun you in the kingdom of their father, if you have ears, then hear. Right, so that's pretty, pretty clear, except the slight who will gather out of his kingdom whatever makes men stumble. Right, so not people, and then, and all whose deeds are evil. Now, what I know is when I first, and I was about, I don't know, 18, I think I was in my late teens, I was lying in bed and I basically said, <clears throat> you know, God, you know, you know me, you know everything I've done. That, that was my... Feeling and I and I was just like, well, it was me. My realization that God knew everything that made me open. And I was taken by this feeling, and I saw all my bad bits. They just came up. Bad things I'd done. Just they just came up. Dum 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 dum. And I felt like I didn't deserve to exist during that. And I can't remember how long it went on. Maybe a couple of minutes. Felt like a few minutes. And then I remembered I had good bits. And I was glad that I had done some good things. Because in front of God right there, it was a really nice feeling, right? Opposite of what I just felt. And it was as if those bad bits had just been burnt up. Just, they're just gone. Forever. And I don't mind that, yes, parts of my life, gone forever, don't exist. So that's what I know. First hand, I know that's what happens. And since then, I've, I've had a couple, of, couple more times, you know, time passes, doesn't it? It wasn't as though I was perfect, so I never did anything bad again. So, you know, a few times now in my life, I've had that. What's that? That's not baptism of fire. <coughs> so I know that. And so when I read 
whatever makes men stumble. And I could just say, and all deeds that are evil. And I know that to be true. So I'm saying with this particular parable, maybe John and Yeshua discussed it. Maybe it's something they'd discussed before. And maybe they are different parables. But I don't, see, I can understand why, you see, don't, don't go and pull the weeds out now because you might take out the, the good stuff with it. Now how would that apply to people? Like, if they were truly children of evil, now you see, maybe Yeshua at this point in his life believed that. Well, he said it. The children of the evil one. You know, maybe that was partly to do with some of the bullshit earlier on in the Bible. Because he read the scriptures. And if you read there's truth in there. So maybe they didn't understand. But it was John's it was John who spat it out first, and he spat it out with, with that. You know, what makes a, a prophecy good is its succinctness. Really short, but you've got to get the words just right. But he did it flowing, right? Blah, 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 blah. It just, it was just, you know, it had the spirit in him, right? And just spits out so short. If they had sent people to take the lies out of the Bible, because they are so entwisted with the truth, I can see then how that parable applies. Because you might take out some of the truth. So it's better to have the, the truth and the lies in here so that we know all the truth made it. And now, now is a time, a harvest time, when, when we're really going to need to start applying this stuff. We really need to go and find that God, each individual person needs to do that. And the truth is so important. It's so important. And this universe, this plan that God has is perfect. And whether you know it or not, you are capable of feeling truth. First thing you do is you have to be you. Don't be anyone's expectation of you. Just be you. Right, one more thing. No, two more things. <laughs> Hello. Forty-three minutes. All right. Oh, get out the sun a bit. Um. So I marked in the Bible here. Now, there's one thing I haven't found. Right. Right. Now. Now. Yeshua has just basically realised he's um, going to have to let himself be captured. This is God's plan, he's realised. So he's, you know, he's been getting, you know, he's done all this healing. He's brought Lazarus back from, from death. I believe that. He's met his soulmate. He's, you know, he's... He's on fire, right? He's, he's on fire now, right? So, despite what it said about him when he was 
doing those parables earlier, you know, he wasn't at his he wasn't at his heights then. Now you know, now he's getting there. But he just realised what his father wants him to do. He asks his father, is it possible you can take this cup from me, if it's possible? And then in the, in the end he just says, I'm going to have to drink it. I will drink this cup. Alright, so he's, I think he's now explaining... Well, I'm just going to read from here, John 12... 27. A voice from heaven, it says. Now my soul is in turmoil, and what am I to say? Father, save me from this hour. Father, save me from this hour. No, it was for this that I came to this hour. Father, glorify thy name. Thy name, Jesus. A voice sounded from heaven. I have glorified it, and I will glorify it again. The crowd standing by said it was thunder, while others said, An angel has spoken to him. Yeshua replied, This voice spoke for your sake, not mine. Now it is the hour of judgment for this world. Now shall the prince of this world be driven out and I shall draw all men to myself, when I am lifted up from the earth. This he said to indicate the kind of death he was to die. The people answered, Our Lord teaches us that the Messiah continues forever. What do you mean by saying that the Son of Man must be lifted up? What Son of Man is this? Jesus answered them, The light is among you still, but not for long. Go on your way while you have the light, so that darkness may not overtake you. He who journeys in the dark does not know where he is going. While you have the light, trust to the light, so that you may become men of light. After these words, Jesus, Yeshua, went away from them into hiding. Now I think that is, it may be mentioned again that he is saying, the light is among you still, but not for long. So Yeshua is basically saying, and I think there's an, there is another scripture, he says, while I am in the world, there is a light in the world. This probably is this one. I may have to look. Sorry, I know, because I read the whole Bible, but... And so usually things come to me. I don't read the Bible and then work it out. Usually I'm, it comes to me and then I just check it in the Bible. And that's the way it works. And because there are a few different versions, sometimes it's, it's that, right? So this is all about the, you know, so why didn't it work then? The, the, the Jews have a, you know, what they think of as their final Messiah. In the end days, and and you know the, we're talking. I mean, I say Jews. Let's say Israelites, right? That the people that um, uh, Yahweh or Jehovah or Adam decided to, he was going to build up and make great, but was frustrated, and then you know ends up cursing them. Whether they're the white Jews that are in Israel at this moment, uh, doubtful, doubtful, doubtful. They may have been persecuted by Hitler. That doesn't make them children of Israel. It's fair enough, they put up with a lot of shit. But, and I've said before, you know, it's... The people who are taken in slave ships and yokes of iron and musically gifted. They they were the ones. But it's it's not God anyway, it's not there it was it was Jehovah, Adam, Yahweh. God, so called Elohim in the beginning of the Bible, um, but Yeshua revealed the name Jesus is our mother and father. 
So, Yeshua was a Christ, the fifth Christ. And he also was significant in the sense that he was God's first temple. So God had had other Christs. Adam is a Christ, in a sense, created by God, had communication with God at the beginning. And he may have lost that. Not for good. We can all come back, we can all repent, we can all come back. That's the way it is. Forgive and repent. Um, so, but he was the first, and then, and then Noah, Abraham, David, and David was like the first king, but God said it wasn't, he wasn't his first temple, and that one that come after him would build his first temple. So Solomon built a temple, but that wasn't God's temple. That wasn't the temple God had in mind. The temple God had in mind is the, a body, a physical body, that is capable of connecting to God. Or a soul, in a phys while in the physical body, able to connect God on earth. <clears throat> it does something. It affects something. It sends waves out. It's, it's light in the world. So Yeshua achieved that, but it was the plan of God it wasn't for him to last in that state for very long back then. But it happened and it caused such a turmoil and also discovering the name of God. There's power in that and people have been using it. And it is with a J sound because they had to invent a letter. I haven't got any space. Sorry, I did that. I didn't do that very well, did I? Sometimes it's like this. Arrgh. Obviously not meant to be. <laughs> I tried to draw that again. Sometimes it's like that. So they had to invent a new letter in the Greek. And why they didn't invent one in the Hebrew, I don't know. I'm not sure. But they would have known Greek. They would have, you know, they were close to Greece. They would have seen Greek writing, probably Greek philosophers. They would have had some of that. And anyway, they were going on to the Gentiles, weren't they? The Jews had basically refused him. So it was it was being invent you know, first of all it would just been with mouth. But then when it gets written down, at that time it was Greek. So that was the fifth Christ and what he did. And there was a sixth Christ, that was Saint Francis. And he faked his death when he was forty. He'd gone blind. He, he, he had, um, you know, he's, he went and complained to the Pope, it's in the film, Brother, Son, Sister, Moon, and he, you know, he had a go at him, saying, look all the riches you've got, you know, and this isn't the way it should be. But the Pope was able to sort of pacify him, and, you know, in the film there's a whisper, you know, they're like, why is the Pope allowing him this time and everything and and someone whispers the Pope's not dumb he's he knows how to get the poor on his side okay so it's all that politics but France is such a good person naive in a sense you know that he went along with it and this affected him in the sense that he didn't he didn't go blind he had to cover his eyes because Everything was so blinding to him. So he was the opposite of blind, <laughs> in a way. Um, but I believe that he, you know, gradually, because he, you know, he would have thought, you know, such a belief in God, you know, why, why have you done that? He would have got to the answer in the end. And his eyesight would have come back. And he faked his death. And there's a, 
the fable we all know, Arthur and Merlin. Okay, you can accuse me of doing what I had a go at people for doing before, but I've, I've felt about this. I didn't know it's true, but it, I felt about it. It seems to fit in. And I think Francis's main things that he did was stuff to do with the English language. They're all nonsense calls, I get. Stuff to do with the English language. Bringing the English language in. And if that, you know, is the intended international language for the earth. Sorry. I didn't leave a message. Anyway, so, and you got this favourite Arthur and Merlin. So Merlin being St. Francis, and there was an Arthur of Brittany around that time. But then he lost a battle, but no one knows where his body went. And I've read you that in this book, in a previous thing. And then there was this Simon de Montfort. Oh, I don't know, there's a blue point. Simon de Montfort appears, anyway, so I think um, St. Francis would have lived for about 220 years, so in about 1400 he would have died and the light would have gone out of the world then too, because he, would have, he built God's second temple, he would have been bringing that light into the world back then as well, and doing other things. And I am claiming that I am the seventh Christ. And that I have... I think I'd started on it before, but I do believe now that that temple is complete. And I can bring light into the world. And I probably have been doing a bit... Text messages. Yeah. Salespeople. Persistent. So I'm gonna, I can carry on doing that, it's not a problem, it doesn't matter if anyone believes me or not on that. That's, that's no issue at all. But what you believe is very, very, very important to you. It will be very, very important to you how you will feel, how your, how your emotions will work. And, I'll get on to my last point now. God is immune system. This physical body is not you and it's not yours. This universe is not ours. God has given us the earth to do with what we want. We've been on this earth a long, 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 long time as other creatures and stuff. But now for the first time we're in a a physical being that can be aware of itself and then begin to ask questions like well how did all this get here we didn't make it who made it <laughs> who made us who made them the questions and there are answers and God has made it it is perfect it is wonderful God has made it so you can feel it, but you need to know you. So God is your immune system. It's, uh, it's God's job to repair and maintain the body God has given you. And you can get in the way of this, and it will be affected by your relationship with God. So also, what you believe about God will affect how your body heals. And maybe the physical body is capable of more than we know. It's true. <laughs> and at least what I say, you know, okay, so you can't go and check it on Google, you can't look it up on the internet because... I'm not 
referring to anything like that. I'm not. Re I'm not taking it from books. I'm taking it from what I know firsthand. What I feel. See, I was earlier. I was. I was trying to figure out what I was supposed to do today. In my head, and I was. I was reminding myself, your head doesn't know anything. Your head is just where you balance things up and make sense of things. So go to the heart, feel, and then you'll know. You know after the feeling. Is it? You can't. I can't explain. Well, you get feelings, and if you're sensitive to those feelings, you feel them. They sort of, they sort of go, Phew. and then information comes, and it might be in pictures, it might be some sort of understanding. There's many deeper levels. I mean, we, this is our being. You see, this is our true being. I think your physical body is complicated, you know, your true being is way, way more complicated. It is a universe. A physical manifestation. So at least with what I'm saying, you can try it out for yourself. One more thing about the Bible, and then we're done. So, you follow the Bible literally word for word, you'll get to where the preachers are. They think Jesus is in hell, taking all their sin for them. And they think it doesn't matter the sins they've done in the past. They think they're okay with that now. They've been saved. It's a belief. They just believe they've been saved. They haven't done anything with those sins of the past because they don't think they need to. But you do. You need to repent. And you need to do it in front of God. So open yourself up to the God that you know is there. Always. So what happens? Jesus dies on the cross, comes back, visits his disciples, this enthusiasm, Yeshua, sorry, goes and speaks to Paul, enthuses him, right? The Jews reject it, it gets given to the Gentiles. But what happens with all this healing and stuff? Because the in Acts, the disciples are able to do it, they're able to heal, they're able to cast out spirits. Paul is able to cast out spirits. But then something happens. Some people try and cast out spirits in the name of Jesus and Paul. But the light has gone out of the world. Their faith has gradually weakened. The spirit comes out and goes, I know Paul is, I know Jesus, but who are you? And kills them. He had the power to do that. The light had gone out of the world. Eat my flesh and drink my blood is a parable. Be in God and have God in you. You don't need to drink wine and in the name of this and the name. To know the hallowed name is is great. It's one up, you know, but it's not the end of it. Okay, point, point made, I believe. I'm getting on with my day now. And so there won't be a, a live tonight, today. That'll be it. I'm not sure about the lives anymore. Just a bit of a distraction. If I had more people wanting to watch, maybe it'd be interesting, but yeah, I think this format is better. Okay, love. Love is many forms and 
sometimes you just got to call a spade a spade and it might not seem loving at the time perhaps you know you don't always know you probably only know afterwards just be yourself okay